When was she first advised that police had received a complaint from a girl who alleged she had been raped by members of a group calling themselves the Roastbusters? Honourable Anne Tolley. Uh, Mr Speaker, my office was advised in a phone call from Police National Headquarters at about 5.55 last night. I was advised by my office just after the start of the 6 o'clock news. Uh, Materia to raise supplementary question. Does the Minister share the confidence of the Prime Minister regarding the police response to this case that, quote, if there is criminal wrongdoing that they can follow up on and take action, then I'm absolutely confident that they'll do their job and do it thoroughly professionally, end quote, given that she has now referred the police response to that case to the Independent Police Complaints Authority? Honourable Anne Tolley. Yes, well, Mr Speaker, I've made it clear in this House today that I do have confidence in the police, but there are enough questions over this case, partly because information has literally dribbled out this week, uh, that has prompted me to ask the IPCA to conduct a full investigation into it. It is really important that the public have confidence in the police processes around serious sexual assaults. Yeah, yeah. Supplementary. Supplementary question, Materia Turay. What reasons have the police given the Minister for waiting days to correct the statement that was made on Sunday that, quote, none of the girls have been brave enough to make formal statements to us so that we can take that to a prosecution stage or even consider a prosecution? Honourable Anne Mr Speaker, I've made it clear today how disappointed I am that neither I nor the Commissioner nor even the district commander knew that a formal complaint had been lodged by a 13-year-old girl two years ago. But the Commissioner does assure me that that um, formal complaint was uh, very thoroughly investigated and did not uh, ha produce enough evidence to take a, a case to court. Point of order, sir. Sub, uh, or Point of order, I, I'm not trying to make a political point here, sir, but I did ask what reasons the police gave for failing to provide the accurate information in a timely way, and, and, and that wasn't answered. Well, no, I think it was. Um, as I interpreted the answer, the question's been asked, and they're still trying to find out why there is. the Commissioner didn't know, and he was just as concerned. The, the way to tease this out is for the supplementary material. Supplementary question. Uh, does the Minister consider that the police's apparent failure to act in this particular case is likely to be isolated? And if she does think so, why? Honourable Speaker, yeah, again, I, I am assured by the Commissioner that the police conducted a thorough investigation uh, uh, into the formal complaint that was laid by the 13-year-old girl and did not uh, produce enough evidence to take a case. Uh, but the very fact that there are still questions about the handling of this case is why I have referred it to the IPCA to give both me and the public the assurance that the, the way that the police handle these serious sexual um, assault cases is thorough, is in line with the new protocols, uh, and uh, to give us all assurance that this is an isolated case. Supplementary, supplementary question, Materia Turay. What advice has the Minister sought on removing the systemic barriers that prevent the police from taking complaints to trial and which lead the police to wait for more assaults on uh, young girls to occur, as has happened in this case, for some years before they believe they have sufficient evidence to take the case to trial? Honourable Anne Tolley. Well, Mr Speaker, again, the Commissioner, Commissioner assures me that there has been a very thorough investigation and that that investigation has been ongoing for two years, trying to put together enough evidence to meet the requirements uh, to take a case to court. As recently as two weeks ago, the other three girls were approached by police to try and get a, a formal complaint from them. In two cases, their mothers refused. Uh, and again, the Commissioner advises me that the third girl has also refused. Now, no one, no one underestimates the difficulties for these young girls 
in taking a, making a formal complaint. But the police have done an enormous amount of work, and I refer the member to the um, uh, protocols that were tabled by the Minister of Justice in the House earlier this week. They were worked through with Louise Nicholas, who was involved in a, in a very notable case. She has worked very closely with police from a victim's perspective. What I want to be able to assure New Zealanders is, through an IPCA report into this investigation, and in particular to the investigation around the case of this young 13-year-old girl, that all those protocols were followed, that the victim was at the centre of the um, investigation, and that New Zealanders can have confidence in the police to come forward and make these complaints. Supplementary. Supplementary question, Materia Turo. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Will the Minister support the urgent development of a specialist sexual violence court and an alternative process for sexual violence offence cases, both of which have received very strong support from judges and lawyers, from sexual violence support services and the public, given both the difficulties that victims have bringing their complaints to the police the difficulties the police have in dealing sensitively and responsively to those complaints and the police's reluctance to take sexual violence cases to trial. Honourable Anne Tolley. Um, well, Mr Speaker, first of all, I have no ministerial responsibility for the development of such a policy, but I have discussed it with the Minister of Justice, who has addressed it in this House earlier this week. These cases are extremely complex. One of the difficulties is trying to separate out a particular set of charges uh, around these assault cases and try them in a different way from some of the other aspects of that case, in which case you would be putting your victims through the process twice, which it's a difficult enough process anyway without re-victimising a person and making them go through two lots of courts. So it is ongoing. Uh, the, the Minister of Justice has, has made it clear that she is uh, willing to talk with police uh, and, and her department about some ways of easing the process for these young women. But these are very difficult cases to take to court and to prove. Supplementary question, Materia Ture. Will the Minister commit to leading a cross-party working group to build both a political consensus and also political urgency for the reforms of the court and police processes, such as a specialist uh, sexual violence court and changes to police process, to better deliver real justice to the victims of sexual violence offences, particularly children, as in this case, and better justice for their families and New Zealanders. Honourable Anne Tolley. Well, Mr Speaker, again, I repeat, I have no ministerial responsibility. I cannot make that uh, guarantee. But what I have said, tried to explain to this House today, is that the police have made enormous changes to the way that they deal with sexual assault cases and victims in particular. And I would like the IPCA to investigate this case to give me reassurance and to give the public reassurance that as much as we can do and will continue to do was, has been put into practice by the police in this instance. But if the member has uh, any suggestions uh, and her party has any suggestions about how we can uh, ease this process. Um, while still retaining the need to have evidence to take to court, I'm delighted to hear it.